Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. And in the video today, I'm gonna to be going over how to use this Motorola phone for beginners. We're gonna walk you through all the basic information you would need to know to use this phone. So just to give you a quick summary of what you'll learn in this video, we're gonna do first a tour of the phone so you can know where all the buttons are and what they do, how to navigate the phone screen, how to get your notifications, connect to Wi-Fi. Uh, then we're gonna go over how to download applications, how to set up your email, how to make calls and send text messages, how to change your font size so you can make the text bigger if you need it bigger. So make sure you watch the entire video so you don't miss any of that important information. Let's go ahead and jump right in. In the first section, we're gonna be doing just a basic walkthrough of the exterior buttons and navigating the phone. So let's jump right in. So on the left side of the phone, you will not find any buttons. You'll just find the uh, SIM card tray. And so if you have an older phone and you have a memory card, uh, find the box of your phone and grab your SIM tool and you will use this to be able to pop out the SIM tray. Just put it in the little hole at the top of the tray here and push. And you'll find your memory card slot here, micro SD. And then you'll have your phone SIM card right here. So if you need to put in a SIM card or a, a memory card from an old phone, that's where you would put it in. Now on the right side of the phone, you'll find your volume up button, volume down, and the power button. Now, let's talk about how to control the phone volume really quickly since we're here. So let's unlock the phone. Now, pressing the volume up obviously will turn the volume up and pressing the down button will turn the volume down. But there's a little bell at the top of this menu here and uh, it pops up and goes away quickly. So just try to keep your eyes on the screen here. So if you press the volume up or down, it'll bring up this menu. And this bell is what controls your main volume, vibrate and silent. So when you see the bell, that means that your volume is, is on and up. But when you tap it once, it will not put the phone on vibrate. If I tap it again, it puts a slash over the bell, and that means that your phone is totally on silent. Now pressing volume up or down again, I can now change it, and now I see the bell, and now I know my volume is back on, and I'll get my calls and text messages coming through loud. Now one important thing to note, press the volume button and tap on this little menu at the bottom here, and this will bring up your four main phone volumes so you have your, what is called media volume, which controls videos and it controls music. So if you want to listen to music, um, this will raise that specific volume right there, music or videos. Uh, for calls, this will raise the volume when you're on the phone so you can hear the person come through louder or not as loud. This next one is ring and notification volume, and that is how loud your phone is going to ring when someone calls, or how loud you'll hear the notification sound when you get a text message. And finally, you have your alarm volume, and that is for when you set an alarm, how loud the phone is gonna make noise. So that's how you access this menu. Just to show you one more time, I'm gonna hit volume up or down, and then tap on this settings menu at the bottom and that's gonna bring up this menu. So if you notice that people, you're not hearing your phone ring, I would tell you to check that menu to make sure that you have all your volumes turned up accordingly. Okay, heading back to our uh, phone uh, navigation of the exterior. At the bottom of the phone, you'll find your uh, auxiliary port to plug in your uh, headphones. You'll find your charging port. This phone uses what is called a type C charging type. So if you ever need to replace the charger, make sure you ask for a type C charging cable. And then we have our stylus pin here. Next, we're gonna go over this power button here. So um, pressing the button one time will put the, the screen to sleep, but it does not turn the phone off. So a quick press turns the screen on, puts it to sleep. Now, if you hold down on the power button, it will take you to the power menu, and this is where you'll be able to access the power off button or the restart. So if you notice, one, your phone is running slow and you need it to restart, just hold down on the power button for one second and this menu will pop up. 
that will allow you to restart the phone or turn it off altogether. And you also have an emergency button that will make the phone make a loud noise um, to alert people that you're in trouble. So that's how you power the phone on and off. Now here we're on the lock screen and if we need to unlock the phone, we're gonna take our finger, put it on the screen and just drag up. And that's how you unlock the phone. I'm gonna walk you through how to navigate the screen. Where is everything? What do you need to know to use the phone, the basics? Now, before I start, there's one settings tweak we're gonna to need to make to make the phone easier for you to operate. So you wanna swipe down from the top of the screen, swipe down again, and tap on the settings wheel right here. This will take us to our settings menu. And um, this is what you'll normally see when you first go to settings. You'll need to swipe all the way up and go to system and then gestures and then system navigation and you'll want to switch to three button navigation. This is going to change the settings to make it a bit easier for a newer person to use the phone. You'll notice at the bottom of the screen here, now we have three buttons, a back button, a home button, and a recent apps button. And these are gonna be the three main buttons you'll use to navigate the phone. So let's jump into what these buttons do exactly. So first, the home button always takes you back to this screen, which is called the home screen. So if I were to go into one of these little icons, which are called apps, apps is, is short for application. Think of like a computer. Computers have programs, phones have applications or apps for short. When you go into one of these apps, let's say we went to the camera, which is right here. If I wanted to go back to the home screen, all I need to do is tap on the home button right at the bottom here, and that'll take me back to this home screen. So no matter what you're doing, if you tap on this button, it always takes you back to the home screen. Think of it as, hey, I hit the wrong button. Oh man, I didn't mean to do that. No problem, I'm gonna go back to home and start over again. So this always takes you back to this screen. Now the button on the right is, is called the recent apps button. And the recent apps buttons basically always shows you what applications are running on the phone. So as an example, we were in the camera application and then we hit the home button and we went back to the home screen. Now an important thing to note is that just because we went back to the home screen, it doesn't mean the camera application is now closed. It's still running in the background of the phone. So by tapping recent applications, that button, this shows me oh, the camera is still open and I can tap here to get back to the camera if I wanted to. Now, if you'd like to close out all of those applications from running in the background, simply tap on, tap on recent applications, that button, and just swipe up. This will allow you to close out all the applications that are running in the background of the phone. Helps the phone run a lot faster as well. So that's recent apps. Next, we have what's called the back button. And the back button just helps us to maneuver easier through different applications. So as an example, if I were to go back to settings by swiping down from the top, swiping again, tapping the settings button. Let's say I were to go to display. And now I wanna go back to the last page in the menu I'm going to tap my back button right here and that's going to take me back one step. That's all it does. It just takes you back one step. And if you continue to hit it after you've gone as far as you can, tapping it again takes you back to the home screen. So it's just uh, an easy button to help you navigate through the different menus by taking you back one step every time you tap it. So those are the main buttons you're gonna to use to navigate the phone. Next, we're gonna move on to the section called the notification panel. And we're gonna get there by taking our finger, going to the top of the screen and just swiping down. Now this is going to show you all of the notifications that have come through your phone. What's an example of a notification? Well, an email, 
here it shows I got two emails. So if I wanted to go to those emails, I can simply just tap in this section and it will take me right to the email application. I also have a weather notification that shows me this is the weather for tomorrow. So cool. And this section will also show you if someone were to send, someone were to send you a text message or if there were uh, like a Facebook message or Instagram or any other applications you have on the phone, they communicate with you through this section of the phone. And when you're finished reading them, guess what? I can just swipe it away just like that. Oh, I see I have some emails. I'll read those later. I may not swipe those away. This one, okay, I'll swipe that one. Oh, now you can't swipe them all away. Some of them won't let you, but either way, this is where all your messages are gonna come through. Now, at the top of the screen here, we have what is called, or what are called the notification switches. Now, these switches control different settings on your phone. So for example, if you want to connect to your home Wi-Fi network, or you want it to go to a public restaurant such as a Starbucks, you can tap on this little icon to connect to their Wi-Fi and use their internet for free. So I'm just gonna tap the icon, and once it's lit up in blue, that tells you that the Wi-Fi is on and it's looking for a signal. Now, if you'd like to connect to a specific network, take your finger and just put it on the button and just keep it there for one second. That's gonna take you right to the settings menu and it's gonna start checking for different Wi-Fi networks. So in this case, let's say you're at you know a Starbucks and Starbucks shows up here in the menu, you would tap on, I mean, this one says Spectrum, but let's say it's at Starbucks, you would just tap on it and then tap in the password box here, and then you would enter the password and then hit connect. And that would allow you to connect to a public Wi-Fi network. It's just that easy. I'm gonna use my back button here to back out of this. See that? And that's gonna take me all the way out of that menu. So that's how you connect to a Wi-Fi network. And again, I'm just swiping down from the top of the screen. Now, one important thing to note is you can swipe a second time and it'll show you more options. So just to show you that one more time, swipe one time to see the first six switches, swipe again to see more, and I can swipe to the left to get even more shortcuts um, to different settings options. You have a battery saver mode here you can turn on to make your battery last longer. You have a night light function Screencast will let you send your phone screen to your TV if you have a Chromecast. One important thing I wanna show you is the flashlight. Now with the flashlight, I can just tap this button here and it'll use the camera flash as a flashlight to help you navigate or look closer at something, you know, with your phone light. So these are different, uh, again, just shortcuts to different settings. You also have your Bluetooth option if you have a Bluetooth speaker or Bluetooth headphones. Um, same thing, you just take your finger, hold down on that button, and it's gonna take you right to the Bluetooth menu where you can then connect to a Bluetooth device to pair it. You'd have to tap pair new device, and then make sure your new device is also connected or is in the pairing mode and once it's in pairing mode, you can connect and then you could send the sound to it. Okay, so that is the notification section. You also have a shortcut to your hotspot in the event you wanna use your phone as a hotspot for your tablet or computer. And you have uh, a lot of options here. So go through here to just see all the different things you have available. Um, notice one more thing here. When I swipe down one time, I just have these six options. When I swipe again, I have a brightness bar at the top of the screen here. This will help you to raise or lower the brightness of your screen. So if your screen is too bright, you can turn it down and vice versa. If it's too low, you can turn it up just by using the little slider at the top of the screen, just like that. 
Okay, so that was the notification panel. Now, the next thing we're gonna go over is applications. So I talked about it briefly earlier, computers have programs, phones have applications, and people will say apps for short, um, meaning applications. So first of all, if you wanna see a list of all the applications on your phone, you're going to swipe up, and this section will show you all the different applications that are on the phone. And here you'll have a couple of folders here. So there's a Google folder with Google applications. There's a Metro folder, if you have the Metro version of the phone. There's a Motorola folder that has different Motorola apps. Um, so keep in mind, you might find certain applications will be in folders. Now, if you'd like to download a new application, maybe you wanna get Uber or a slot machine app or Sudoku or just a, a new application, you're gonna go to this icon, which is called the Play Store. The Play Store has anything and everything you can think of that you'd want to download to your phone. It's all in that one place. It's a one-stop shop for applications, games, books, and movies. Tap on Play Store. Now, this could look different for different people. So let me stop and just explain. If you have not signed into a Google account yet, then you probably don't see this screen. You probably see a prompt that's asking you to sign into your Gmail or your Google account. If you see that prompt, you will need to sign into your Gmail and put in your password first before you're able to access the Play Store. You have to have a Google or Gmail account because that's how it stores all of your app information. It's all through your email address. So fill that information out. If you don't have one, at the bottom of the screen, you should see a button that says create account. You'll need to click on that button and you'll need to follow the, follow the steps to create a Google account, which should only take two or three minutes. Create the account and then afterward, it'll allow you to get to the Play Store to download applications. Okay, let's move on. So if you wanna download an application, it's, it's fairly easy. There's two ways to do it. Um, you can um, go to games or apps, and these are just different sections that are gonna showcase different things. So you have games, apps, offers, movies, books, these different options here. If there is a specific uh, application you want to download, let's say it is Solitaire, I can tap in this little box at the top of the screen. This box says search for all apps and games. Just tap in here. I can either type in solitaire, or as you start typing, it'll begin to recommend, or this is my favorite, I just use the microphone and just tap it and just say the name of the application and it'll automatically search it for me. So let's try it. Uber. So it'll take what you've said, it'll search for the app, and I can just tap this green button here and it will begin installing Uber on the phone. Now, one important thing to note, if that green button does not say install, if instead the green button has a price in it, that means that the application you have searched is not free. It means there is a charge. So keep in mind um, or be aware of that so you don't end up purchasing something that you didn't mean to purchase. Most applications are free, but there are applications that, that do cost. So again, if you see a price, make sure you are okay paying it before you tap the green button. So once you hit install and it begins downloading, you just need to go home. So we're gonna hit our home button to go back to our home screen. And then we're going to swipe up. And this will take us to what is called our app drawer. And once Uber finishes downloading, it's gonna show up right here. And there it is. This is our Uber application. And I can just tap on there to then go into Uber and then begin setting up my account. So that is the process to download an application to your phone. It's fairly easy. You just need to search, type in the name, or you can either type in the name or say it and hit the green button and that will download it to your phone. Okay, so now that we've gone over applications, next I wanna go over 
making calls, text messages, um, those basic forms of communication. So on the home screen, you will see a phone icon or we'll tap on there. And this is where you'll need to go if you want to make a phone call. Okay, so we're here. We're gonna then tap on the icon in the bottom right, this blue icon. This takes you to the uh, dialer or the keypad and it will allow you to then type in a phone number. So I can search, I can type in a number now. And I can tap the green button to initiate this call. So let's try it now, green button. And now our phone is ringing and it's making the call right now. If you wanna put the phone on speaker, you'll just tap the little speaker right here and there's that call. If you want to end the call, hit the red button, and that's how we end the call, just like that. Now, the next thing, let's go over how do you answer the phone if someone is calling you. So, I'm gonna initiate a call to the phone so you can see what it looks like, and I'm gonna show you how to answer or how to decline the call. Okay, so here we go. A call is coming through. I can either tap the green button to answer or the red to decline it. I can also tap on it to see it bigger and I can then swipe up to answer or swipe down to decline it. So if you notice, I know I did that quickly, but there were two things you saw there. So the call comes in in a small pop-up at the top of the screen first, and you'll either need to tap the green button to answer or the red button to decline it. And if you were to tap on the call, then you have the option to drag the little circle up to answer it or drag it down to decline the call. So I wanted to go over both scenarios so you guys know exactly what you're gonna see and you are prepared to answer or decline calls. Okay, the next thing I wanna go over is how to check your voicemails on the phone. So if someone were to call and you miss the call and they leave you a voicemail, it will show up as a pop-up in your notification panel. So if I just swipe down from the top of the screen, um, at the very bottom of the list here, it'll say voicemail. Now there's a chance you may have a lot of pop-ups in here, so you might need to scroll up till you get to the very last option. And when you see the one that says voicemail, just tap on voicemail. And here it will allow you to call your voicemail to then check your messages. So that's how you check your voicemails. Next we're going to move on and talk about how to send and receive a message. So for this, you will need to go to the messaging app and you should have it on the bottom of your screen here. If not, when you swipe up, you'll find it right here, the blue icon. Tap on messages and really easy, it says here, start chat. So tap on start chat and you'll just need to type in the phone number of the person you would like to send a message to. Now, if you come to the upper right and you see this little keypad, tapping on here will allow you to then search a phone number. Um, so I can just start typing the number in. So I typed in a phone number and at the top here, you'll see a contact is gonna pop up and I can just tap on that contact or I can just hit the little check at the bottom here and then that will populate that phone number and so I search the number that is already saved in my phone so then it's showing me the name of the person. Next, I'm gonna tap in the send message box and I can send my message. Hi, how are you? And then you're gonna hit 
the blue button here to send the message. And that's it. That's how you send a message. Now, if you wanted to send a picture or a video, you can tap on the little paper clip to the left right here. And you would tap on, so right here it's gonna say camera, or it's gonna have a camera icon. Right next to it is a, uh, an icon for the gallery. So we just tap on that. And now I can scroll through and find a picture in my phone. I'm gonna tap this picture. And then I'm gonna hit the little send button here. And now it's gonna send a picture as well. So that's how you send a picture or a video in a text message. Let's hit our home button to go back to the home screen. Next, we're gonna talk about how to take pictures. So we have our camera icon in the bottom right corner right here. So tap on the camera. And the camera is pretty straightforward. You have a photo button right here. This is showing you you're on the photo setting. And if I wanna take a picture, I just tap the little white button here, take a picture, really easy. If I wanna take a video, I'm gonna tap the video button. And now my button is changed. It has a little red dot in the center. So if I tap the red dot, it will begin recording a video. And I can just move around. My video is going. I can see my countdown or count right here. And when you're finished, just tap the red button to stop the recording. And that's it. If you wanna see the video after, to the right of this little icon is your gallery. So tap there. And here I can play back my video and see how it looks just by tapping on the video. There we go. I'm gonna tap my home button here to go back to the home screen. Now, if I wanna later go back and see the pictures or video that I've taken, I'm going to um, swipe up and go to the Google folder right here and then go to photos. It's in the bottom right corner. And then now I can see all the pictures that I just took, all the, also some I took earlier right here. This is the video we just took, the picture we just took, and some photos I took earlier. You can tap on them and swipe through to see them bigger. And then when we're all done, just hit our home button to go back to the home screen. How do you sign into your email account to check your emails? Now there was a step previous, there was a step earlier in the video where we talked about signing into your Google account. Now some of you may have multiple email accounts, not just a Google. And so I wanna show you how to sign into those other email accounts. So it, on the main screen, you'll have a Google folder. Tap on that folder and go to Gmail. Now you might be saying to yourself, well, I have a Yahoo, I don't have a Gmail. Well, guess what? In the Gmail app, you can sign into almost any email account. They have prompts to allow you to get into other email accounts. And that's what I'm gonna show you next. So I'm gonna hit got it. It's gonna show me, this is one of my email accounts, but I wanna add another email. So I'm just gonna hit the plus to add another email. And here I have my different options. So I can sign into another Google. I can sign into an Outlook, Hotmail, Live, Yahoo, and Exchange. These are all the options that are available in the Gmail app. Now, if you're like me and you have an AOL email address or an SBC Global, those are a little trickier to sign in with the Gmail app. So I'm gonna show you one other way to sign into those email accounts on your phone. Let's go home. We're then gonna tap the Play Store and we're gonna to go to the top of the screen. In fact, just hit our little arrow at the top here. So tap in the search box and you're gonna type in the end of your email address. So in this case, I'm gonna type in um, at and to, hit, to find the app, I just hit the numbers button in the bottom left corner. 
That's going to show me my symbols. I'm going to tap at and then type in AOL.com. And then I'm going to hit the magnifying glass in the bottom right corner to search. And it's going to bring up the AOL app. So there's an app for AOL. I can just simply install the AOL app and then I can sign into my AOL email. Now, if you have an SBC Global, no problem. I'm hitting the little arrow here to erase. And now I'm going to type in at SBC Global. Dot net and hit the search. And now it's showing me a list of applications that support sbcglobal.net email accounts. So you can go to, you know, Yahoo, uh, my at and or I also like this generic email app here. It just says email and this one actually works really well too. So you would tap the green button to install the application. And then once it's installed, we would go home, swipe up. And so if you notice our page of applications is full, so I would need to swipe over. Once that application downloads, you'll be able to swipe, oh actually not, excuse me, not swipe over, just swipe up. And you'll be able to see that application. So watch this, I'm gonna swipe up. Oh, it actually put it right here. So there it is, my mistake. So there's the email right here. And then I can sign in to my sbcglobal.net after I accept the prompts here. Okay, let's go home. In the next section, I'll be going over how to make your text larger on the screen by increasing the font size and the display size. Let's swipe down from the top of the screen swipe down a second time and tap on the settings wheel. Find the display option, tap on advanced. From here, tap on font size and you're gonna drag this little bubble to the right. Dragging it once will make the text larger and dragging it one more time will get you an even larger view of the text. Now we're gonna hit our back button and go up to display size. And same thing, drag this to the right so you can see how each time over it makes the text just a little bit bigger. And if that's not big enough, you can go over again. And if that's not big enough, this is the largest you can. I hope it was helpful. Make sure you guys like, favorite, and share if it was helpful. Hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. Take care and as always, have a good one.